The surge in LED lights is obscuring night stars and its bluer wavelengths disrupt our sleep. So what could LED light therapy possibly do? Welcome to Skin Tuition. I'm Heather Furness. And I'm Josh Corman. As two plastic surgeons, we lay aside our scalpels and explore the non-surgical world to bring you what's new, what's safe, and what to look for when you're ready to hit refresh. So Josh, what are LED lights anyway? Yeah, LEDs are, that's a, one of those famous TLAs, three-letter acronyms, but it stands for light-emitting diodes in this case. And they're basically light sources that penetrate the skin through different wavelengths that are basically colors. And there's a variety of different colors for different treatments and different results that work sometimes. <laughs> Right, uh, works sometimes. So, um, so yes, yeah, so what they can do uh, reduce inflammation. Like, um, like what? What? What would people? Why would they want to reduce their inflammation? Well, inflammation is basically the body's response to something that's caused reactions. So, acne would be one. Rosacea, which is a tendency to get red, basically red outbreaks on the skin. And eczema, which is kind of the scaly stuff that people get on their scalp and other places. And another thing that uh, LED lights can do is promote collagen production. And we think of collagen production for both sort of an anti-aging, helping fine lines and wrinkles, as well as wound healing. But everything produces collagen. I mean, not everything. Like your car generator won't produce <laughs> collagen, but that's how your body works is it's producing collagen. All these different uh, products that people talk about is, oh, it helps with the production of collagen. Yeah, so everything produces collagen. That's what the body's doing all the time. And collagen is a protein that helps to keep the skin looking firm and youthful. I think the idea is you know, the right amount of, of inflammation can actually help heal and be anti-aging, but too much is not a good idea. And I think these lights, just like the colors of the, of the Roy G. Beef, the red, oil, oh, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet of the, of the rainbow spectrum, uh, I think people have figured out that different lights, colors do different things. So... If I come to you and say, you know, I, I want to um, improve my fine lines and wrinkles, are you going to recommend a uh, LED light? Yeah, we'll call this the red light district um, <laughs> <laughs> because the red light is most often used to treat wrinkles and fine lines. It's also used to treat inflammation and, as we said before, promote collagen production. I, I think part of the question is, you know, how much? I mean, red, how red and all that, but we can get to that in a minute. But red light is usually the color for wrinkles and fine lines. And blue light, interestingly, is something very different. Yeah, blue light has been used for a long time for acne. Um, and, and again, the difference between red light and blue light is actually the wavelength. Um, and blue light are more like the 420 nanometers in length and red lights more like the 560, 580. So it's these different wavelengths that have different effects on skin. And blue light um, is good or is thought to kill acne causing bacteria um, and reduce oil production that seems to respond best to the shorter wavelength as the 420 nanometers as opposed to the red light, which is more the 560. And we mentioned in the intro that wave, the bluer wavelengths disrupt our sleep and it actually interferes with the production of melatonin with that shorter wavelength that can actually penetrate our eyes, which oh, so is, is one that, reason. Is, is that why, like, I remember sleep, uh, staying in a motel once where you could see the flashing neon light outside that was blue and I didn't really get a good night's sleep. I wonder whether that was because of that. Uh, well, that's neon, but it oh. is a blue wavelength. So yeah. that's a really good... <laughs> it, could, it could have been the sound of the freeway in the background. That could have had it too. <laughs> but it's, uh, blue is not all blue. And I think that's the point. It's like neon is a different uh, <laughs> gas. And so therefore it's a different thing. <laughs> so it's important to understand the difference between what's truly a wavelength and what's a gas. 
Yeah, the, it's interesting actually that it um, that the blue light impacts this um, this acne causing bacteria. Um, the bacteria produces this protein, and uh, it absorbs the blue light, and then that chemical reaction actually kills the bacteria. I mean, it was pretty cool. But, you know, like you could, I could see it being done in a adventure type movie. Um, is zapping all the bacteria, but it's and, also it's also important to understand that the color that's absorbed is different than the color that's reflected. That's true. Because like green plants, people always think that because there's chlorophyll in green plants, and people think, oh, is that the absorbed color or is that the reflected color? And really, it absorbs all the lights except for the green, and that's what you see. And so it's important to kind of figure out what's actually being absorbed and what's being reflected. Just like you have the three primary colors of crayons and you or paint, and you mix them all up and it's kind of muddy brown, but you put the three primary colors of light and it turns white, not black. Yeah, it is yeah. pretty. I mean, the whole wavelength is pretty cool in absorption. Um, there's also amber light and green light. And we actually don't really um, hear as much about them. In our uh, med spa, we have red light and we have blue light. Um, but amber and green are also helpful. Amber can reduce inflammation and promote healing, stimulate collagen and elastin. And the green light can improve skin tone and reduce hyperpigmentation. So actually... Um, the uh, green and yellow or amber light can balance melanin. So sometimes that is given in treatment of acne to prevent the discoloration that can happen as acne scars are healing. So the thing I try to understand about acne, acne is one of the great afflictions of the human race, um, primarily obviously in during teenage years, but um, especially with the cystic acne, which is the more severe acne, and um, in my practice, we treat acne scars all the time where the acne is gone, but the scars are there. And, and I, it, it is interesting that skin is, is uh, acne is such a problem. Um, I, I realize that in general, the most important thing is to wash your face twice a day. That would be really helpful. Um, in teenagers, it's hard to convince them to do that. But um, the, the, we don't want to underestimate the impact that acne has on patients. And, and these are certain treatments that actually do, can help acne. Yeah, the, it, it, these are not, LED lights are not great for blackheads and whiteheads, but, um, but more, you know, pustule-like um, acne. And it, it, it really can be such a debilitating thing for uh, patients to go through. We talked about products that can be used uh, in a previous podcast, you know, Retin-A and um, benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid, which uh, can be used in multiple forms. Um, but blue light is an addition. And so if you're, if you have acne, it's really helpful to uh, look at the different modalities and use them together. Uh, the when you have an LED light therapy session, it's you know, you're not going to see a lot of benefit with just one session. And LED light sessions typically last about 15 to 20 minutes. Oftentimes, they're added on to a treatment, and they're done pretty frequently, like for acne, about um, three to five times a week. And you can um, do this uh, for several weeks. And so... So why shouldn't I just get one for home? And like, because it seems like, do you really want to go and see to the doctor's office five days a week? That's that's <laughs> yeah. like a little, a little excessive maybe. Uh, yeah. Expensive, inconvenient. The one thing about the home therapy is that you don't get the power that you do in a medical office. So it's not going to be as effective, but on the other hand, it can help with maintenance. Uh, FDA, the FDA approves home devices for safety reasons, but not for efficacy. Um, so when you do go, if you do use a LED uh, at home, it's important to not go 
um, beyond what the directions instruct as far as amount of light exposure, um, because the LED effect um, will disappear, you, it stops uh, responding, and excessive use can actually damage your eyes. Which yeah, is you, have, what, you have to really protect your eyes when you do this. Yeah, you have you know safety goggles when you're uh, when you're having this uh, applied. Neutrogena actually had a light therapy mask that they voluntarily um, pulled from the market um, because of this. So, um, so how much does it cost anyway? It seems like, you know, the LED therapy by itself, I mean, in a treatment can cost like $150 to $300. Um, so I guess if you're getting, I mean, how many do you, do you need and how often do you need it? I mean, you can do the math. At home device, I think the home devices cost a few hundred dollars. Um, probably a big range, but, um, but they don't work as well. Um, so I guess it's a little of a question of, I, mean, I think one thing that I think is important to recognize that there's, you can combine treatments. A lot of non-surgical treatments work best when combined with other treatments, like maybe with microneedling. Um, do you do that in your, in your practice, Heather? Yeah, we do a lot of that combination. So we do the microneedling and then do the LED light at the end. And sometimes we use um, use it with our form of, of microdermabrasion, which is um, uh, hydrofacial, and then end with an LED light. And that's a, a really nice um, combination to enhance the results. So as, you know, it depends on, on whether you're having a, a standalone. It's actually not all that common to see a standalone LED treatment. It is usually done as an add-on. Um, and so if you're, if you're looking for the treatment, as you said, Josh, costs are $150 to $300, but in that combination, it may be more um, cost-effective. Yeah, and, so, so what about aftercare? Well, there's really not a lot to do. There's no recovery time. Um, you can resume your normal activities. You might be a little bit red, uh, but it's that's the nice thing about it. You know, it doesn't give a dramatic result after one treatment, but it's also um, very low risk. You know, we talked about the eye damage, and you don't want to uh, do too much power, but um, but it's it's a pretty safe uh, treatment. So. How long do results last? Well, I think the results are a question of based on how how well does it work. Probably like everything that you have to keep the maintenance to to keep it going and for it to last. I, I, in in my experience, um, using LED lights, um, there's a bunch of treatments first, and then. You probably every month or two, maybe every few months, you need to do another treatment to to keep it up. I think the the main thing is that life is still happening, and so and we're still aging, and we're still exposed to sun. So I, I think it really is a function of and acne still keeps happening in in many patients. So it it is really a, I think a range of time, and that's it's really based on the individual. Yeah, I think you go through your your multiple treatments per week um, session for what, however many uh, sessions, you know, uh, 10, 20 for fine lines and wrinkles, 8 to 12 for acne. And then you can repeat that, um, they, you know, not necessarily the same number of sessions every three months and just see how you respond. But it is something that you you do need to keep up and the conditions of at least rosacea and acne, eczema are things that are sort of ongoing, uh, fine lines and wrinkles. It can help, but there are more effective treatments with more dramatic changes. And so the um, red light is probably more of a complement to something like microneedling or other treatments. Yeah, I, I guess the one thing that's always sometimes people get a little confused about be, is between these colored LED lights and more the intense pulse light or the broadband light. So, um, what do you? How do you? How do you answer those questions to patients? Like, what's the difference? 
Well, the LED light has a narrower um, wavelength range. And so it's more, you know, it, it targets these specific things that we've talked about. Whereas broadband light covers just like its name says, it's a broader spectrum of light. It includes visible light, infrared and ultraviolet light. And so it's more effective in treating a wider range of skin conditions, such as you know, pigmentation irregularities, age spots, rosacea, you know, redness um, that people will complain about, um, spider veins, things like that. So it um, it's going to be uh, you know more effective. There is some pain involved, and um, and so it's it's a bigger treatment. And then IPL also uses a broader spectrum of light de- delivered in pulses. And it's also um, a treatment that that covers a wider range of skin uh, conditions like age spots and rosacea, very similar to broadband light. So I think that's a pretty uh, a broad area. Light is a it's in itself is a huge um, thing, but I think a lot of the skin conditions that humans experience as a result of exposure to light and also from things that go on inside of them. And light is a highly effective treatment if used correctly. So thank you for listening to this episode of Skin Tuition. Join us every two weeks as we tackle topics from hair loss to hormones and pimples to wrinkles, discovering new ways to feel better about ourselves. Follow us, comment, ask questions, and keep in touch. Have an idea for a topic? We'd love to hear from you. Theme music by Diego Canales, production and engineering by The Axis.